We've done the challenge. Going through the entire thing again. Trolls, we have everything A+. Plus. Literally everything. Except obviously release protocol, like program access reset, but we have the record to show for it. We did it. We have no rig whatsoever. We are still unlocking the amps. And you know, we haven't bought any amps. And most importantly, tier 2 locked, tier 3 locked, tier 1. Nothing. Not a fucking thing. So the question is... What do I learn from this? Um, the main reason why I wanted to do this in the first place is one to just see how rough the game actually is from a perspective of, you know, having no prescription whatsoever, which, mind you, is a huge difference, but also get a bit of an idea of a new player. I know I'm not a new player, but let's say I would do a guide on, you know, a lot of the tags that help me out and so on and so forth. You know, the door snap tag, the uh, um, window tag and whatnot, the hyperfixation thing. Let's pretend I do a guide like that and I would be a new player picking that up, looking through the guide, studying it and then going through it without leveling up. How similar-ish the experience would be like. That was kind of the main reason. Can you please not do that? Thank you. That was kind of the main reason why I wanted to uh, attempt this. To get an idea overall. Which by the way, 71 tickets. It's weird to look at it that way. But yeah. That's the idea I wanted to get with this. My conclusion. <laughs> the prescriptions changed the game way more than the difference between no loadout and loadout. I mean, I kind of guessed that already. If you don't run stun or blind, for example, you can make up for it by figuring out new strategies. And, you know, some amps are really, really strong, especially stuff like noise reduction. But that doesn't change the fact that you can do the trials without them. I've done it a billion times before, like in speed runs, like A plus no damage, no loadout, and so on and so forth. I've done it a billion times beforehand. Now with the prescriptions gone, it's a whole different world. Stamina, probably the main key point, is pretty much, it feels like it is halved at least. That also includes slower recovery from exhaustion and stamina in general. And heavy objects are so much worse to deal with. Especially in trials like um, Sabo Lockdown or the Child Delivery ones. Like, heavy objects are that much, you know, harder to deal with in general. Overall, also... Some basic quality of life stuff just simply missing. Like, um, Pouncers have zero counterplay to hiding spot gals. Literally zero. Hiding spot people are literally the main source from my hits taken. Like, I've taken, like, actually, let me check that. That should be kept on record. No, not on record, but on badges. Where's the badge for that? Lost 10,000 half points, okay? I lost 625. You can't see that because of my cam. Hold up. 625. I don't know what that means in total. Like, of 10,000. But most of the health points I lost because of hiding spot people. Literally. Like, that's very noticeable in the no prescription thing. Also stuff like that, I actually have to worry about night vision battery, which actually made it so I actually had to engage with the lockpick mechanic as well and actually go for containers to get batteries and shit. Like that was welcome, like a welcome change of pace overall as well. But I think the most impactful thing still for me as the person who beat it was the door thing. I think that was the most noticeable thing. Doors 
you can't bash them in like like this. You have to bash them in with your feet. Small change, but still very impactful. The fact that bashing consumes stamina and you can exhaust yourself from bashing doors. Also very noticeable, but most importantly, two hits versus three hits is a world's difference. I had multiple instances where if I had all the prescriptions, I would be like, okay, I'm in chase. I would just bash this open and go through that. With that, with these conditions, that's just not possible. You have to think differently. If you know there's like, oh god, this door is locked or there's a bashable door or something. I actually have to go out of my way to think about that more and not turn my brain off and just bash it down. It's such a difference. Like, it's such a huge difference. So yeah, that also, again, with the stamina in general, like jumping, like jumping as in jump leaping forward, I think does 20% of my base stamina, I think, because it combines the fact that they... I think they nerfed it in update 4 that vaulting takes more stamina plus that I don't have the prescription to reduce the stamina cost from vaulting plus that I don't have more stamina in general it's insane I haven't even mentioned sliding like I couldn't slide and sometimes that was unironically scary when I needed to go through a hidey hole and there was a guy right next to me and I couldn't just slide for victory and I had to you know push my thingies my ass cranks together to get through the against self-defense technique the fact that bouncers have zero counter play is so it's so noticeable and yeah run and smash doors that's the one that enables you to actually bash through doors instead of kicking them that one was also very scary at times but yeah a wall a different world now the question is what do I think about it then difficulty wise though because I just beat it and I will be were pretty chill overall again I mentioned it before like we took hits here and there but the only trial that I didn't a plus first try was destroy the evidence right here the one with the acid that was the only trial where I had to where I got an A because I have a hiding spot person in a trunk and that's the only one I actually had to redo A+. Plus. So you could make the argument, okay, that proves that Outlast Trust is a really easy game if you can just get into that, right? I think it's more complicated than that, though. Because there are two main things that hardcore carried me through this challenge. One's knowledge, obviously. Knowing shit, again, like the door snapping thing. Knowing shit, like the hyperfixation that I know, okay, I throw a bottle there. I know that the enemies are distracted and I can get away with shit. In general, knowing, okay, there's an enemy right there. I can get away with, for example, pushing the boat. Let's pretend this is the boat and I to drag this around. I can get away with pushing the boat and I know there's a person right there. And I know they are not fast enough to catch me for me to make the boat and get it to the checkpoint. You know, stuff like that, obviously very helpful. But also one thing that also carried me, and I haven't even mentioned that yet during the runs that much. But one thing that also hardcore carried me through the challenge was patience. Normally I'm a person who does a shitload of speedrunning and shit. The fact that I went ahead and at parts, Took the chill pill and was like, okay, gas man is right here. I'm just gonna wait and out. The fact that I was like, okay, I am getting chased. I know he's gonna lose me in the dark. I'm just gonna wait him out until he de and goes back to his patrolling stage. The fact that I took a chill and some of the trial times were extraordinarily long. Like, some of the trial times you will go like 20 minutes and for some one who plays this game casually they will go like this is still an insane time for them but for me as a speedrunner who has speedrun this for a very long time for someone like that it's really really long times 
but that also secured that I made sure to even out my grade by do going out of my way to do side objectives like lockpicking shit, disarming doors and so on and so forth. And that also pretty much secured that I don't accidentally get hit too many times or stepped into too much gas because I paid more attention to my environment because I took it slowly. And that's kind of the main thing why I think it's very difficult to actually make a difficulty for this game, which is kind of what I want to talk about before I end the stream right there. Because I think it's very difficult to do that, because in my opinion, a main factor you have to take into account when balancing this right now with the systems that are in the game right now. In the future, they're gonna be ranged enemies, maybe new traps, new mechanics, all that stuff. With how it is right now, such a key factor to balance is literally how patient is the player. And that's one of the main things that was sort of a discussion point when the blind mind got nerfed. Because when the blind mind got nerfed, a lot of people went ahead that you know disliked it and be like, yeah now it's all more tedious now. You could go ahead and be like, dismiss it and be like, yeah um, this is kind of bad saying this. Remember Outlast Trials, even though we forget it with all the stamina prescriptions and shit like at level 2 and 3, we forget it. Outlast Trials in its core is supposed to be a single player, 2 co-op, survival horror, stealth game. And the main thing about stealth games is you will have moments where you're waiting for the perfect opportunity. We had that at the final exam in Vindicate the Guilty, but I was waiting for the perfect opportunity in order to not get hit and, you know, one shot by coil if the one shot variator worked there, but or whatever. Like, in a stealth case based game, it's like about patience. And I like stealth games, and that's one of the main reasons I adore Trials so much, because it does it so well overall like the core concept of it and that's also the main reason before I did Trials I did a lot of Dead by Daylight Ghostface for example it's the same reason I like stealth games and stealth mechanics in games and you know being a bit strategic but the thing is not everyone is like that and not everyone will be like completely patient to you know wait out for the perfect moment and that's where the sort of disconnect starts when you want to talk about like balancing the game and what is too strong, what is too weak and whatnot, and how the enemy should behave and so on and so forth because the thing is when we look at something like hardcore, like hardcore failed hardcore pun intended and the thing is obviously one of the reasons is um, it focused too much on the difficulty of enemies it focused way too much on that like, what was missing there was limited items, no intel, unreliable doors, these types of variators they were missing from here. And I think that's one of the big reasons why it fell flat. But also the thing is, I had that discussion in the official Discord server actually one day before Hardcore came out. Like, how do you actually make, with the systems that the game has right now, that we learned over like almost a year how do you actually make an insane difficulty or a hardcore difficulty how do you actually do that at this point if you keep in mind that you have these factors like patience and all that stuff and like what is the limit should there be like in the hardest difficulty that enemies always somewhat know where you are so you always have to be on the move. Should you have in that harder difficulty that you that enemies are always faster than you so you have to gauge and you know run early so you know you uh, have um uh, so you can make it into the dark before they catch up to you. You know stuff like that or insane amount of enemies other good point like do you just cluster the entire trial with enemies or like when is enough enough because you're also gonna realize yes someone like me craves insane and you know a hardcore challenge 
But at some point in a game like this, with a game type like this, if you overdose at some point, it's gonna turn into bullshit difficulty. Like, literally bullshit difficulty. And I think finding that middle ground is really, really hard to gauge. So, one thing a lot of people were suggesting then also was also adding difficulties now for context a lot of people were not around for the closed beta but in the closed beta we only had kill snitch right we only had that in the closed beta but it had four difficulty settings it had easy normal hard and insane insane didn't exist for the closed beta but we had easy normal and hard and easy normal and hard represented this difficulty was easy then before the update there were two other versions of you know kill the snitch like we had the one with three variators i think it was that was normal and the exam kill the snitch which had six variators that was the hard difficulty so what red wells did when they removed the difficulties they kind of main streamlined them which i guess is mainly because they wanted to reduce the fear that queue times might get too long which with the current player count is obviously a very different concern but that's probably why they removed the difficulties but here's also the thing if you look at it from that perspective that means for a seasoned player like me Red Barrels might not have that many more insane difficulties in mind as well. So you can also look at it from that perspective because if we take that how it was like Kill the Snitch, Kill the Snitch 3 Variators, Exam Kill the Snitch with 6 Variators as like the equivalent to the close beta ones, easy, normal and hard difficulty, then you know, okay, there isn't much room how Red Barrels wants to design the difficulty. Now stuff like that was leaked like the No Running Variator or Naked and Afraid Variator that we had or other stuff like that can definitely change that a lot. And that's the main reason why I think they should keep inventing Variators instead of going for difficulty settings as well. Because here's the thing, you can do, let's say, an Assist Mode. You're starting the game and you can toggle on and off in an assist mode and that assist mode could like do some things for you in case you want to play this game more casually like you have more night vision battery life the enemies detect you a little bit less frequently like sound is more forgiving stamina a little bit more you know forgiving as well you know you could do an assist mode and you can toggle that on and off but on the other spectrum, I think creating that actually insane difficulty, for one, I don't think that's uh, Red Barrel's top priority. I'm still looking forward to what they said in the blog post they were cooking with the program or whatever they want to do for season players. I'm looking forward to that. But overall, I don't think it is... If they advertise hardcore as the maximum difficulty and they do it like this... I think that tells me that Red Barrels isn't that interested in creating hardest and hardest and hardest difficulty. And at the same time, as I mentioned earlier, creating this insane difficulty will be a really, really fine line between um, actually challenging, which for some people Program X is challenging right now with like the increased threat 2 and unreliable doors and all that stuff which is also fair enough by the way and you know creating actual bullshit difficulty it's just really really difficult like I thought a little a lot about difficulties obviously internally while I was doing this challenge and my main takeaway is it's obviously prescriptions really changed the game a lot and honestly, there should be an option to like disable them to some degree. But what I also learned, like somewhat learned from the experience, was also it's not that easy. It's not as easy as like, oh, 
there are the casual players and there are the hardcore players. Let's create multiple difficulty settings. Like, if you think that that would immediately solve everything, I think you're wrong. Like, we... Again, we've gotten to the point where a lot of people like... Like me, who want challenges and shit like that... Are like starving from something official. Which, by the way, is also another main point. And that's also something I want to tackle. If you are someone who is craving a harder difficulty... I... Maybe not like this. Like, this is maybe extreme. But I encourage you... To go through trials, maybe try to speedrun them, do a challenge with them, and not use any loadout. Because I see a lot of people shitting and shitting on the weeklies, for example, or on like any event or whatever. And be like, oh, this one was so easy. By the way, I used the strongest build like stun, noise reduction, strong arm, and whatever. But the shit is still easy and it's the devs fault, you know, and then the same people will complain when shit like the blind mind nerf happens, you know Like Please I'm encouraging I guess as a final word to this discussion if you care about challenging yourself Do some own challenges on your own Like try like if you are for example someone who just grinds program X Day in day out and do the same shit over and over again. If you crave for a challenge and wanted to try something out, maybe try to run it without loadout for once and see how it changes up the game and if you find that more exciting again, you know? Like stuff stuff like that. It's just like as a final word. I don't even really play the weeklies for difficulty, sometimes it's just fun to throw things around. Yeah, that's the that's the other thing with the weeklies. Like the weeklies so far. Shit like this is weak to me. Not only because it wasn't really challenging. Obviously that one is an extreme example because it was like... I don't wanna say false advertising, but... It was also very generic. You know what for me the best weeklies were so far? The ones that actually added interesting shit to the game. For me, my favorite two weeklies so far were Bad Trip that we had last week with the Psychosis and Sharp Glass. These were, these were my two personal favorites so far that we had and you know why they weren't that difficult to me to complete but they were something unique and fun there's a reason why everyone loved the winter event because it was something unique and fun when you heard the sirens that all of a sudden you need to get to hiding spots it was something new and different to switch up the game so I feel they, in my opinion, they should explore in that direction. Maybe create interesting difficulties that way.